Welcome to episode 2 of the Akitin Ocean Project series. And so we're picking off where we left off last time. And we're going to be continuing to build this administrative district that we started to build. And that's the main goal for today. Uh, but there's a few things to cover. For a start, I've made some changes since the last time that we played. I corrected some areas where I forgot to change the speed limits. And then if you look over here, I also added a school, a high school, and most importantly, a park in the center. I was just sort of uh, practicing, exploring a bit, and I kind of saved over. So I guess it's here for the start of the video. That's no problem. Um, just check out this lovely green space with a gym and a swimming pool and a little park in the center. I like to design districts around parks. It's very, I find green spaces very, very important. And then here we have the high school. So we're gonna start off by adding some things to this area. Now the first thing you'll notice is I've actually added um, a proper budget in and we can simulate the arrival of grants. And I think we're gonna just convert it times 10 for the equivalence in euros, even though for some prices that's unrealistic. Right, let's start building. Um, I'm going to be, yeah, so we can say that uh, it's about uh, 10 million euros would be the equivalent to a million, or 13 million euros we have. And then we can ask for grants. Uh, this will be more realistic than having an infinite budget. Yeah, so I'm starting off by building some sports complexes and playground for the for the children. If I can find that. Okay. Nope. Smaller one. Just, you know, to have the school areas be a little bit more lively and decorated. And then we can start uh, zoning. And just checking out. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think also we have a density problem. There's not enough stuff going on. There's too much space between buildings. So I'm going to try and zone a bit differently now. And we can try and improve the density in the areas where we've already built as well. Because part of being eco-friendly is having uh, lots of bike tracks and public transport and things like that. But part of it also is zoning uh, densely and building densely because the more people you have in a in close proximity the less they have to travel we, we want to avoid urban sprawl and uh, I know that the nearby city of Bordeaux where I live actually has a lot of urban sprawl that was developed in the 50s and uh, 60s and 70s going onwards when the city started expanding quickly they, they really went for a car-centric approach to the development. And only the more recent districts that have been built in the last 10 years uh, are reintroducing density. So let's not make this mistake. And let's try to improve the density of this area immediately. And I might even consider later on replacing the low-density housing by, and shopping by only high-density. But maybe we'll do that a bit later on. And we'll see. Because it's nice also to have a some nodes of density, but also have some uh, lower areas. So at the moment I've been making the in inner side more dense and the outer side less dense. And I'm also going to make the uh, areas around the park less dense as well, so that we don't create too much uh, shade in the winter in the parks. So we keep some light on those plants. Although I have just zoned a couple of higher density. Uh, I'm also trying not to surround the schools with high density, so that they uh, are also quite light and there's not too much uh, noise. So I'm gonna avoid, yeah, let's put some low density housing as well. And uh, still trying to keep the design open, but just trying to increase this density slightly. Uh, especially as this is gonna be really a central district and many other districts are gonna be built coming off of this district. So I think that makes sense. Let's 
So let's continue zoning here, following the same pattern of lower density towards the middle, and then we'll do higher density nodes sort of between the outer edge and the inner edge. Uh, but again, trying not to swarm the schools. I guess it doesn't matter so much for the high school. Because we need to get more high density. Now that we have zoned, we can add in some greenery and we can go around making little groups of trees, trying not to make too many repeating patterns like I did for the other squares and for the park in the center. And I think greenery is very important. So although I've made the city a little bit more dense, because I think I might have gone a little bit overboard in the first episode on the, uh, the greenery for a city center. Uh, I still think it's very important to prioritize uh, green spaces in cities. Uh, I actually spent quite a long time, okay, I actually spent quite a long time uh, living in a city called Vienna, the capital of Austria, which is a major city. Uh, well, by European standards, with about 2.5 million people. But the, the, it was um, incredibly livable, and one of the main reasons, apart from great public transport, was that 50% of the city area was forest and parkland. And there were two national parks adjacent uh, to the city that you could access with public transport which is definitely something I'm interested in replicating in this project. But even within the city itself, uh, everywhere where they'd removed fortifications, the old fortifications um, during the 19th century, they had reconverted that, uh, that land. Instead of developing it, they reconverted it into parkland. So they had a, a ring of parks around the city center. And I'm kind of expanding on this and I'm bringing the parks into rings inside the city center. And this just makes the whole space uh, much more pleasant to be in. There's a lot of studies in psychology that show that uh, being in a uh, green space actually reduces stress, so reduces production of cortisol, the stress hormone, and can help with uh, depression. In, uh, in Korea, for example, there are programs that send uh, workers who are suffering from burnout uh, to live in a, in, a, in a forest for a while in order to try to recover from this, this burnout. Okay, I'm, really, I'm really trying to use as many different trees as possible to really create a diversity of textures. I think that's what really makes it look rich and luxuriant. And I'm prioritizing these these pines because they, they, they really like the kind of soil that's here uh, in uh, on the coast of the Atlantic. Uh, anyway, the there's not only psycho uh, psychological studies, but also uh, in terms of heat in the city. Uh, there's the uh, city um, heat island effect, where uh, in very uh, built up areas, you have uh, higher temperatures during heat waves. And with uh, climate change, uh, global warming, there will be, let's put some plants down here to uh, add some texture and also uh, just, yeah, make it a little bit more luxuriant. And uh, yeah, and the, the, the plants actually, by providing shade and trapping moisture, they help, uh, they help reduce this reduce this uh, island effect, so so you have less uh, less heat build up in cities, and with global warming, that's going to be very important because the temperature uh, for this the region where the city is being built at the moment, uh, the they the the summers can get quite hot, but they're generally it's generally quite mild. The winters are mild, and the summers uh, between 20 and 30. So it's an it's an Atlantic Oceanic climate. But the, the issue 
is that with uh, global warming, then we're, we're moving towards a climate that's closer to the south of Spain, Andalusian climate. And this has consequences on the types of designs that we should go for. If we want our city to be durable into the future, um, that's what we need to do. Okay, so just finish texturing a little bit, add some ferns in here. I really like these fer this fern texture. Um, and the other advantage of planting so many things on the edge, like I, I described when I in the episode one when I was building the grid, is that we want to stop the earth from subsiding over time onto the road grid and the root systems of these plants uh, if we combine it maybe with a, with a metal mesh it's just laid uh, that you can't see in the game but we could imagine that you could uh, root the the earth uh, down with some plants and therefore increase the stability of the whole system i'm gonna add, i'm gonna start zoning a little bit more because I, once again there's, there's there's more greenery than is necessary um, and we really need to increase the, the density of this area. Okay, that's one there. Where else can I zone? So I think if we really want to continue to grow and develop, we are really gonna need to start developing some uh, industry because I, I think we're just not gonna attract the people we need without this. And so I'm gonna go and maybe create a small light industry zone, the kind of industry you, you normally would develop in this region. I can get that to come in here. Um, the type of industry you develop would be a uh, forest forestry industry. That's, that's the main industry in this region. Uh, and we wanna make it as light um, and non-polluting as possible. Obviously the game only really simulates this so much but I'll try and get rid of anything that's just spewing out smoke because that just wouldn't be allowed anyway uh, I mean it wouldn't be allowed uh, really within this, the whole region I think you, you would have to have some kind of filtering system I, I don't know it's not a very industrial region here anyway so we're gonna create a small area and the idea for this area is I think we could make it like um, a series of uh, soaring shops. I'm going to call this, I'm going to give it a French name, Zone Commune des Syries, or something like Communal des Syries, let's say. And the, so basically the idea is these are shared uh, soar houses, um, sawmills. Uh, that you can you can uh, register to to work in. The facility is is, is shared and and uh, worker owned. I'm I'm very interested in worker owned uh, cooperatives uh, and business. And I think as we are supposed to be the city of the the future, it'd be good that our first industry is open like this. And this will provide for all the people who are still uh, uneducated. Let's get the water in here. It's very hard to get it under the road when the, the roads are curved like this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I put the water under the road uh, after the uh, instructions of a, a very good YouTuber. I, I really recommend uh, his channel if you like this kind of... You probably already know it if you're watching City Sky. It's a City Planner Plays. Uh, he's a city planner who's playing uh, planning games. And he has a very good YouTube channel. Um... And uh, so I really recommend this if you don't know this and for some reason you're watching this, which I doubt. Um, but he always puts utilities under the road because obviously if you, and this is realistic, because if you want to repair a broken pipe, then you need to have access to it. So you're not going to smash someone's house to pieces. Okay, we have big problems here. Uh, okay, it's just this, this, this is broken. Yeah, you're not going to smash somebody's house to pieces just to um, can get this connected up just just to access the water pipe so and I, I try to respect this in this series too I try to avoid destroying things uh, without any justification and because uh, I consider that if you were to destroy a house I in real life 
Okay, we, we are going to destroy this factory with uh, a chimney because they built that, but it's illegal. We, we, we're forbidding this kind of industrial processing. Okay, still no workers here, but that's normal. Uh, I think that what we need to do now is build something really special and large. So we already have this, and these are too big. Uh, I want to make something, that, a building that will be, wow, that's massive. A building that will be kind of representative of our, um, maybe we could fit another one in here though. Uh, yeah, I want to build something that's representative of uh, the whole area and will be our administrative center. So this is where we'll be doing all the conferences, where our offices will be. This is our building. This is where we are based. Uh, so this one is from Lyon. It's the Silex 2. I think it's a very nice building, actually. You could imagine that... Let's see if we can get it in somewhere. We can't fit it with this path. We're going to have to change this district a little bit. But you could imagine that uh, on those floors there, uh, we could have... Yeah, it definitely doesn't fit. I'm just trying to think of which way around to put it. Okay, let's move this path. Uh, you could have uh, like meeting rooms on those the, those front windows there and have it facing into the center. I can't center it. That's very annoying. So I'm, I think I'll put it on the edge if I can't center it. Or, or does it look close enough to the center? No, it's three on one side and four on the other. That's kind of annoying. But yeah, you'd have like a view over this park. Uh, and then the offices would be that sort of blocky structure behind. I, th I find that idea very cool. Um, let's, let's put it in the corner. Yeah. I'm going to commit to this, I think. Done. These, this is our main offices. I think they're very cool. You have great views from there. It really makes the area stand out. So we need to remake this path network now. Uh, so we'll make something a little bit different for this one. So this will be kind of the one of the most not industrial. One of the uh, wait no we don't need to because this is a ploppable reco so we don't need to zone it. Okay and then we kind of re-establish some paths there. We can maybe build up that district after we can zone that. So that will be it for episode two. I'm trying to change the format a little bit, make things a little bit faster, and uh, but also have more time to, to chat about things that I'm uh, interested in. So I hope you found this one even better than episode one. And uh, I'm going to try and move forward from that. I'm reusing the same clip from the start because uh, I... Uh, I didn't think I was going to stop the episode so soon, so I didn't shoot anything. Okay, we're starting all over again. Okay, until next time.